How's it going guys? My name is Wilson. The 2020 Rookie of the Year winner will most likely be John Moran unless the media rigs it for Zion. Over the course of NBA history, some of the best players all time in Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Larry Bird all won the award showcasing their greatness from the very beginning. But once every couple of years, there will always be someone unexpected to win Rookie of the Year. Some of those players never get better and often gets forgotten over time. With that said, here are 10 of the worst Rookie of the Year winners in NBA history. Number 10, Damon Starmeyer of the Toronto Raptors. The first ever draft pick of Toronto in 95, Mighty Mouse did not disappoint. Averaged 19 points, 9 assists right off the bat. A solid player, one of the most forgotten guys of his generation. Remembered more as a trailblazer. Played just 73 games as a 22-year-old rookie. 5'9", Isaiah Thomas resembles a lot of Mighty Mouse. Averaged 41 minutes a game on a 21-win team with Shannon Wright and Tracy Murray, the second and third options. Being in the same draft class, as KG, Jerry Stackhouse, and Rasheed Wallace, Star Meyer easily won Rookie of the Year over 31-year-old Arvidas Sabonis and first pick Joe Smith. Had all the green light in the world to take a lot of shots on an expansion franchise with no depth whatsoever, which was why his numbers dropped when he got to Portland, having better ball movement and other scores because of his lack of size, his defense wasn't good. Despite never making an all-star team, Star Meyer made close to $100 million for his playing career. Number 9, Emeka O. For. Viewed as a heavy underachiever, the second pick out of UConn was surrounded by hype after winning a national championship, averaged 15 and 11 in 73 games for the expansion Bobcats, shot under 45% from the field, 22 years old, good enough to win rookie of the year, an 18 win team with nobody great, the Bobcats were so bad, the second best player starting center, even I don't even know how to pronounce his name, a 13 and 7 guy none of you ever heard of, Kareem Rush, Gerald Wallace, Brevin Knight and Keith Bogans on the team. The franchise just flat out awful. It's almost a miracle. They won 18 games. Okafor best known for his great rebounding and rim protection. Many didn't take into account his injury history before coming into the league. Won the award over college teammate Ben Gordon while Dwight Howard was only 19 years old. Averaged 12 and 10 straight out of high school. Okafor never developed much offensive skill. Number 8 Andrew Wiggins. Many still not ready to give up on him. Still only 25 years old has all the tools and athleticism in the world but lacks motor doesn't appear like he'll be an all-star player anytime soon we've seen glimpses and stretches but slacks off afterwards having insane hype since high school maple jordan would have been picked number one straight out of high school after an underwhelming season at the university of kansas drafted by the Cavs, part of the kevin love trade many believe cleveland made a mistake but in fact made the right choice the 19 year old basically put up empty stats for a 16 win timberwolves team average under 17 points, 4.5 rebounds, 2 assists, under 44% shooting, 2.1 win shares, a negative offensive and defensive plus minus rating, negative value over replacement, under 52% true shooting percentage. The Wolves went from a 40 win team with love to a 16 win team with a banged up Kevin Martin, role players Daddy is Young, Shabazz Muhammad, and Nikola Pekovic. The other options, Wiggins played all 82 games, rookie of the year runner up Nikola Mirotic averaged just 10 points, Jabari Park season cut short due to injury, Joel Embiid didn't play, third place Nerlens Noel of the Sixers, nobody else a dread, after Parker went down, it wasn't a surprise, Wiggins was gonna take home the award, having nice dunks, the only rookie at the time to average double figures, never made a huge leap, and remained pretty much the same player 5 years later, the Wolves were so bad, despite taking home the award, bad enough to land the number 1 pick, taking call Anthony Towns, who proved right away who was better, helped Minnesota increase their win number by 13. Wiggins were of the least exciting rookie of the year winners all time. Hasn't added anything to his game besides being a scorer. Number 7 Ernie DiGregorio. One of the best players in Providence history. The third pick, the 6 foot point guard lasted just 5 seasons before injuries derailed him. Averaged 15.2 points, 8.2 assists, career highs, 81 games for the Buffalo Braves, won 42 games. The team's improvement mainly from second year sensation. Bob McAdoo's 30.6 points combined with adding Jim McMillan, one of the most forgotten players all time, had a similar game to Pete Maravich, his most amazing NBA accomplishments, holding the rookie record for assists in the game 25, tied with Nate McMillan, DeGregorio was 
was already out of the league by 1978. Number six, Mike Miller. Of course, he was in the week 2000 class, never close to being an all star. The fifth pick out of the University of Florida, played all 82 games with the Orlando Magic. The franchise failed to land superstar Tim Duncan. Miller started 62 of 82 games, averaged almost 12 points, four rebounds, under 44% shooting from the field, 41 from three for a 43 win team that lost in the first round. Got the edge over number one pick Kenyon Martin, who put up 12.7 and a half rebounds on a 26 win Nets team. Nowadays, a first year guy averaging Miller's numbers will only be good enough to make second team all rookie, but wouldn't even be close to winning rookie of the year. Combined with being in the weakest draft class all time, nothing more than just a solid role player for much of his career. Miller won the sixth man of the year award in 2006. His outside shooting kept him in the league till 2017. Number five, Michael Carl Williams. 2013 was going to go down as well of the weakest classes similar to 2000 but not anymore because of the Greek freak MCW already 22 years old out of Syracuse peaked his very first game a draw dropping 22 points 7 rebounds 12 assists 9 steal performance and a win over the two-time champion heat little did anyone know that was all a fluke on a terrible Sixers team that finished 19 and 63 a bunch of G League level players a tanking roster most of whom no longer in the NBA MCW started all 70 games averaged 16.7 points over six and six two steals on 40 percent shooting had the green light to do whatever he wanted given some of the names he had to play with won the award easily over second overall pick victor oladipo who wasn't as good yet no other rookies put up close to better numbers one of the most shocking results as the 11 overall pick the definition of putting up empty stats on a terrible team the 6-5 point guard had one of the biggest drop-offs of any rookie of the year winners in recent memory his lack of shooting makes him a huge liability on offense. Banged up by injuries, never efficient, can't finish around the rim. His advanced numbers, 1.3 win shares, negative in both plus minuses, being a journeyman and continue fighting for his NBA career still in the league as of 2020. But for how long? Number four, Ray Felix. The first African American to win the award back in 1954 with the Baltimore Bullets at 23 years old, averaged 17.6 points, 13.3 rebounds, under 42% shooting on a 16 and 56 team, even made the all-star team due to the lack of talent in the early NBA days. After being traded to the Knicks, the 6'11 center's production dip never average as many points and rebounds again. His numbers are most comparable to a modern day Andre Drummond, never known for winning. His legacy was blurred by the lack of national fanfare. Number 3, Malcolm Brondon. The 36th pick of the 2016 draft, the 6'5 two guard played 4 years at the University of Virginia. Already 24 years old arriving to the league, 3 to 5 years older than most guys his class, one of the least remembered rookie of the year winners, averaged just 10.2 points, 4 rebounds, 46% shooting. 40 from 3 for the Bucks mainly coming off the bench. Ben Simmons missed his entire first season with injury. Brandon Ingram and Jalen Brown wasn't good as rookies. The second and third pick finishers, Dario Saric and Joel Embiid, both drafted in 2014. Saric played two more seasons overseas. And Embiid missed two years of injury, would have easily won the award if he played 20 more games. The second true rookie to produce solid numbers, Buddy Hill's 10.6 points, traded in the middle of the season, a disappointing class at first. Brondon had the lowest points per game of any rookie in league history. Many believe the only reason he got the award was his team making the playoffs, becoming the first second round pick in modern history to win the award. An inspiration to all four year college athletes and second rounders, easily the worst rookie of the year in recent memory. In some years, Malcolm's rookie production wouldn't even get him in the top 5 voting. Unlike some of the guys on this list, Brondon has proven to become a very good NBA player, even borderline all-star level in 2020, and will continue to produce as a starter in the near future. Number 2, Woody Salisbury. Another player way back from the 50s and 60s, the 6'7 power forward selected 60th overall the 8th round in the 57 draft, averaged just 12.8 points, 10.3 rebounds, and 71 games shot just 36% from the field on a 37 and 35 Philadelphia Warriors team didn't improve or get worse during his arrival made his first and only all-star team his second season overall his numbers weren't good 
a poor shooter, under 35% career field goal percentage, the lowest number of win shares of any player in NBA history, a minus 7.9, the lowest overall draft pick to ever win the award, a record he will likely hold forever. Number 1. Don Monaghy, the most forgotten rookie of the year winner all time, the first winner in league history, the 6'7 power forward, drafted by the Fort Wayne Pistons, averaged 10.7 points, almost 7 rebounds, 38% shooting in 68 games, most remembered for leading the league in personal fouls and disqualification, 26 of them. His first season, still the NBA single season record, 334 total personal fouls in those 68 games, gave him an average more than 4.9 fouls per game, never came close to his rookie season production afterwards, average single digits from then on, lasted only 343 total games, just 5 seasons in the league. Honorable mentions include Sidney Wicks, Phil Ford, and Tyreek Evans. Wicks had monster numbers of 24.5 points, 11.5 rebounds, 43% shooting as a power forward for an 18-win Blazers team, an all-time great college player for the dominant UCLA teams, but wasn't a game changer in the NBA. Ford, a terrific rookie, averaged 16 points, 8.6 assists, over 2 steals for a 48 and 34 Kings team, but lasted just 7 seasons, an eye injury ruined his career forever, while Evans became the third rookie to average over 25 and 5 for the Kings, a 25 win team, regressed it after, lost confidence in his game, and didn't care as much, a role player ever since, has a lot of talent, but never maximized his potential, banned from the league till at least 2021. Those were 10 of the worst Rookie of the Year winners in NBA history. Which recent one surprised you most? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more content, more good stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.